Welcome back everyone, Patrick here, moving on to another question dealing with triangles. So in an isosceles triangle, we have to find the measures of each angle of that isosceles triangle in each of these three different scenarios. So in part A, the two equal angles are each double the third angle. Part B, the third angle is double each of the equal angles. And then part C, each of the equal angles are five more than one half of the third angle. So before getting into these, let me just create some room here first. I'm gonna show you in a diagram what is going on and what we're referring to. So let's say we have an isosceles triangle. And so let's say these two sides are equal. Now, if those two sides are equal in an isosceles triangle, then we know that these two angles are gonna be equal. So I'm gonna label them X. And then we're gonna have this other remaining angle. Let's label that Y. And that remaining angle here, the one that's other than the two equal ones, that's what I'm referring to when I say the third angle in all these scenarios, right? It's the one that's, the one that's not equal to, uh, to the other two. So we got the two equal angles and then we have the third angle, quote unquote. That's what I named it. So, in any triangle, the sum of all the angles is going to be 180. So an equation we can create with that specific diagram is we know x plus x plus y has to equal 180. And then notice these are like terms, so we can rewrite this as 2x plus y is equal to 180. And so this is the diagram that we're going to use for all three of the scenarios. And so this is one of the equations that we're gonna be using for all three scenarios as well. So that's gonna stay consistent from A to C. Now, what's gonna change is the relationship between the equal angles and that third angle. So notice in part A, we're told the two equal angles, so each of these are each double the third angle. Meaning that if we take that third angle, which is y, and then we multiply it by two, we're gonna end up with each of these angles over here, x. And so notice that from there, we have another equation. And so we have two equations, two unknowns, we can use substitution or elimination to solve for x and y. So I'm gonna use Substitution just because the x is already nicely isolated. So we have to plug in 2y for this x. So we'd have 2 times 2y plus y is equal to 180, like that. Now, if you don't want to do it like this, where you're dealing with, um, with two variables, you can try to draw the triangle in terms of one variable, but then you just gotta be careful with your labeling. So we say the two equal angles are each double the third angle. So we can maybe label that third angle as X, and then we can label both of these as two X like that. And then we could just say X plus two X plus two X is equal to 180. And then that x value we're gonna solve for is gonna be that third angle. In this case, we let it be y. And notice that that's what we're gonna end up with here anyway. We're gonna have four y plus y is equal to 180, which would be five y is equal to 180. Over here, we would end up with five x is equal to 180. And that x is that third angle. Over here, the y is the third angle. So we're gonna get the same solution. So you can do it that way. Personally, I like to just introduce two variables and then have that one equation we're always gonna work with. And then just from the wording, create that second equation, right? I feel like even though it might be a little bit longer, I do feel like it's less of a strenuous process versus trying to make sense of how to label these, right? Because as you'll see in part C, it can become a more complex scenario and then labeling these like that can be a little bit more, uh, more tough. But whichever way you're doing it, just make sure you're getting the same answers. So going back to this over here, 
notice that we can now divide both sides by 5. So y would end up being what? Uh, 36. That's what this angle is going to be. Now, if we want to solve for the other angle, what we can do is we could plug in this 36 for this y, or we could plug it in there. I'm going to plug it in there. Just the x is already nicely isolated. Uh, so that would be 36, 2 times 36, which would give us 72. All right, so in part A, this angle is 72, this angle is 72, and then this angle is 36. And then if you want to quickly check your answer, what you could do is you could sum them up. 72 plus 72 gives us 144, plus 36 would give us 180. And then notice that these are double that. So we could be pretty confident that that is the correct solution. So that's what the answer is for part A. Now let me erase this here. Let's, uh, let's now continue with part B. Now remember that one equation is always going to be the same. So we're going to have 2x plus y is equal to 180. Now in part B, what they're saying is that instead of the equal angles being double that third angle, we're told that the third angle is double each of the equal angles. So instead of having x equals 2y, we're now going to have y equals 2x. Right, so one more time with the wording. The third angle, which is y in that diagram, is double the equal angles, each of the equal angles. So we've got to take the equal angle, multiply it by 2, and then we're going to get that third angle. Right, so that's going to be the equation that we're going to work with for part b. And now here, what we would do is we would take this, plug it in for that y. So we'd have 2x plus 2x equals 180. So we'd have 4x is equal to 180, divide both sides by 4, x would be 45. So we'd have 45, 45, and then y is just going to be 2 times that 45, which would be 90. So this would be 90 over here. You could check your answer sum these up. They're going to sum up to 180. Notice that in this case, it's actually going to be an isosceles right angled triangle because there's a 90 degrees there. And then notice that that third angle is double each of the equal angles. So it makes sense in the scenario. Now, finally, moving on to part C. So each of the equal angles are five more than one half of the third angle. So this one's going to be a little bit tricky to make the equation for. So we still have that same equation, 2x plus y equals 180. Now over here, let's read this carefully. So each of these angles, each of the equal angles, are five more than one half of the third angle. So if we take that third angle, which is y, and we multiply it by one half, and then we add five more to it, that is going to give us each of the equal angles, right? The equal angle is five more than one half the third angle. That's the second equation in this case, right? So you got to read these very carefully, maybe a couple of times just to make sure that whatever you're writing here makes sense with the wording, right? Sometimes it takes a little bit of time to really get this part right here. But once you get it, it just becomes a substitution or elimination question. In this case, the x is already isolated. So I'm going to take this, plug it in for that x. So we'll have 2 times this 1 half y plus 5 uh, plus y is equal to 180. Right, so I took this, plugged it into this x, into the first equation. And then from here, what we can do, distribute the 2 in. So notice 2 times a half is just 1. And then there's that y there. So that would end up being y. 2 times 5 is 10 plus y equals 180, like that. 
and then we could just isolate for y. So let's bring the 10 over, the two y's like terms, y plus y is 2y, 180 minus 10 gives us 170, divide both sides by 2, y would be 85. So this here, this angle is, um, is 85. And now we have the y value, we could plug it into here, or we could plug it into here to get the x value. I'm gonna plug it into this one since the x is already isolated, but it doesn't matter which one you would plug into, you'd get the same x value. So over here we'll have 1 half times 85 plus 5 equals x. So we're gonna get a decimal here. So 1 half times 85 gives us what? 42.5 plus 5. So x would end up being 47.5. So that is each of the equal angles. So this is gonna be 47.5, 47.5. Okay, and you could check it, 47.5 plus 47.5, that gives us 95 plus 85 would give us 180. And then you could check this wording so each of these angles, each of the equal angles are five more than one half the third angle. If we take one half of that angle, which is 42.5, and we add five to it, we would end up with 47.5. So we could be pretty confident with those two checks that the angles we got are correct.